welcome back to Warrington Filming. Right, in this video, I'm going to show you step by step how I go about painting a particular plot. Um, from, from start to finish, from filling, emulsioning, undercoat, glossing, etc. It's a routine that I use to paint a, a, a new build plot. So I'm going to start off by showing you um, me filling up what kit to use, etc. And show you the whole process in, in little stages of, of, of the procedure that I go to uh, paint this, this particular plot. Right, and when it comes to your tubes, what I'm basically going to do, I'm going to get half a dozen tubes, right? I'm going to cut the ends off, right, so. I'm going to get the, the nozzle bit and I'm just going to cut it off at an angle there. And what I'll do, I'll get about half a dozen of them and uh, get them all ready and then start my gunning up. Okay, so once you've, you've prepared all, all your, uh, your, your cork, your, your tubes as we call it, right? Basically what I do, I go around the whole property, upstairs, downstairs, everywhere, around the stairs a lot. And I go up, uh, or, or tube fill out, whatever you want to call it, tube fill, go up, all down the side of the orchestra with the skirts, etc. Bits around the stairs, everything that needs going up, I'm going to get that done first. The reason is, I need that to dry. Now it depends on the working conditions that you've got at the time. Sometimes you might have no lights, no heating, or you might have heating, in which case this will go off in, in an hour or so. But uh, the idea of gunning up first is, so you're free off your woodwork, ready for the cutting in. Um, and you, you especially want to be doing this first if there's no heating. So anyway, I'll start off and I'll, I'll, I'll gun up. Down all the archives, around all the skirting boards, in one particular room first. Yeah? And the reason I cut all the tubes up in one go is so I've not got to keep stopping and starting. So I've got all the skirts up. Down the corners of the skirting, skirting board if it needs doing. And I'll continue that process through every room and keep going, go from room to room to room till it's completely done. That's what I do Next thing, get your powdered fill up, get a, an empty uh, emulsion tub or, or whatever, it's like a paste tub. Uh, cut it so you've got a couple of inches like so and uh, mix my filler up in that. Mix my filler up with my uh, two inch filling knife. I've got my wall scraper there. What I do is mix it up in there, put it on my wall scraper, which I'm going to scrape the walls down with and go around and fill the whole pot. Right, we're on the stage now where we're filling all the woodwork in the whole property. Um, one thing to bear in mind when you're filling your woodwork, there is a video on it as well, if you go, go down the list somewhere, is only fill as much as necessary, right? If you overfill, it's more rubbing down. So only fill what you've got to fill. Don't put too much on. I'm not saying don't fill it properly. I'm saying fill it, but only put what's required. The more filling you do, overfilling you do, the more rubbing down, so it takes you longer to prep the frame up, doesn't it? And you end up rubbing all the primer off if you've overfilled. Very simple process, but some people just can't seem to do it. Only a little nail heads made by the nail gun, so just fill. What needs filling? Simple. 
You can fill it, push it in, let it bubble out, bubble out a little bit. Uh, that's, that's basically where I filmed that flame now. Just let it bubble out a little bit, you know, push it in, bubbles out. One thing to bear in mind also, whatever woodwork you're filling in the property, just around the walls, just check the surrounding walls, get quick, that's all you gotta do, because the agents will pick it up. Them indentations. So fill all your fill your frames, fill all your woodwork in the whole property and just check the walls over while you've got the, the filler uh, mixed up for any dents or indentations and check the ceiling. Do tap one. There's one look. Just straight bit flush. Simple. So that's basically it. Right, next port of call is. Most plots are going to be base coated for you. Some will be sprayed, some will be rolled out. Um, the ones that are base coated by hand normally haven't had the corners done. Um, so what I tend to do, even if they look like they're finished, I'll just go around and give them a coat. Like so. And if it, what you normally find is a lot of them are just, they, they don't normally get done, they're in bare plaster. So you have to go around and give two coats. Now I know it doesn't get in the corners, so you have to go around with a brush when you do the tops. So that's what I go after, after that last procedure. Right then guys, when you've gone around the whole plot with a corner rolled up, uh, whether it's bare plaster or whether it's just had one coat and you've been around it and you, you've double rolled it with a corner roller the next procedure is cutting the tops in now what I tend to do here on the top of these windows it's normally quite thin so what I normally do is I go over with my 3 inch brush Like so. Now the reason I do it with the three inch brushes, I only really want to do it once. So by using a brush, I'm getting a thick coat on. Now some what some people do, the, the use of rag roller on it. And the piss about trying to get it covered with a rag roller, or the, the rolling, the, the rolling with one of these little rag, well not rag roller, one of these jewels rollers. They'll roll it, and then when they roll the walls, when they roll the walls, they go over that with a big roller again. So there's a couple of ways to do that. Then obviously. You pull down this um, cover from the light fitting, go around your lights, like that, so you've done there. You've done that, it's a couple of ways of doing that, what I would say. And you come into your, the corner of the room, just give it a bit of a lift down there with that. Check any snots off, plaster off, like so. And what I tend to do, get the Dulux 4 inch roller. Roll down as far as I can. Or, if you like, you can do it by a brush. If you do get a thicker coat on by a brush, just takes out a little bit, a bit longer, do you know what I mean?
get on the top of the frame, cover the top of the frame with emulsion, because we're always checking to see if the paint at the top of the frame. Cover that bit of bare timber as you're doing it. So you're like climbing that up where the chip is shaving it off. Come down as far as you can. Gives you less to do when you cut the bottoms in. Would take you a lot longer to do if you're uh, unfortunate to be on a building site where they take all the tape off the protective tape off the window. It's going to give you a right in that look. Now, because it's low level, you have got to finish these reveals in a roller finish. You just brush them. You'll get picked up on that. We'll make you rub them down and uh, repaint them by. Probably will find you need to just whiz over these a couple of times. Cover the hole underneath. 
the wind of all. I know we just go on the face a bit there. Make sure you hit the corners of them, normally in bare timber on the end of the window wall. These are not too bad, but they can be a lot worse when they've been done on the base coat. The lads just give them a really pissy coat. <coughs> So just a motion to where the, the valve is, that's all you need to get done is that bit, where that valve comes out to about there. Now I'm not going too mad at cutting it in, I'm just getting mo most of it covered. We're not going to actually take the rads off, but you're looking. So that's basically that, and get the rads back on. I didn't get the rads back on first. Everybody sees it's been took off. Because if they see it took off, they'll start saying, oh, you've scratched it. So yeah, that's it. Get all your reveals done in the whole house, even around the front door, patio doors, and then any crap that goes on the skateboard, you can dust that off as you cut your bottoms in, because you scrape the walls down already, didn't you? So yeah, on to the next one. Right then, we're at the stage now where we've got to get all the ceilings on uh, before we scrape down the walls. So this is the stage we're at now, roll the ceilings. Make sure you pull that. 10% in your emulsion, get your 15 inch roll off. Just glaze it a few times. I normally go about a metre square out of each roll up full. And if you're rolling the ceiling in the kitchen, make sure you come off all them units up. Don't over thin your emulsion, otherwise you're going to struggle to get to cover. And that's all you've got, you got to do, you don't got to wait for it to dry and put another coat on. Just glaze it half a dozen times in the same area. You can see whether it's covered or not. Right then guys. All the tops have been cut in, ceilings have been rolled, right? Now, the next procedure, I'll scrape the walls down. Now, the reason I scrape the walls down at this point is because after I've rolled the ceilings, you're gonna get splashes on the walls, right? And that's the time to scrape it all down, round the plugs, etc., before I start cutting the bottoms in. So, let me do a bit of scraping. Probably Big wall scraper. I'm just going to go over the whole surface. Round them plugs.
I'm running around a whole plot now and scraping the walls down. Um, like I say, the reason you scrape them down is when they do a base coat, <coughs> before the plugs go on, they tend to pick crap and, and grit out the plug areas and put it on the wall when they're rolling. That's if, if it's not been sprayed. Plus when you've emulsioned the ceilings, um, splashes paint on the wall, so you've got to spray the walls down, lads. Right then, now we're at the time where I do all of the cutting in on the bottom section, that's round the archery skirts and round the plugs. One thing I should mention is keep as much paint as possible off the plugs because once the cleaners come in, if they start moaning and there's too much paint on the plugs, you could get a bill for it. Right. <coughs> Three-inch brush again. And because I do minimal filling on the skirts and woodwork, I can hit the top of the skirts board really much. Whereas if you overfill the nail holes and then hit it with emulsion over the top, the back of these fell a harder to rub down, so just bear that in mind when you fill. I've done a video on that, but when you fill, minimal amount. It will also help speed up. It will also help you speed up because you're not much to rub down. You can just leave it in, in a brush finish, but if you do, make sure you feather it off. Or you can just whiz over it with a roller. Just prefer it to the end of the day, you're going to whiz it with a uh, big roller. So that's it. Basically, now what you've got to do. Is go around and cut the whole plot in boo 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 skirts round plugs down archers etc. When you do a downside of archers, completely paint the edge of that archery. That's got a full coat of emulsion on it. Some, some blokes just go up a bit like that. Just get the whole lot, paint the whole thing.
final stage of emulsioning the plot. We've done all the ceilings, done all the cutting in, scraped the walls down, etc. Now it's time to get the walls rolled. So let's do it.
right, so what I'm going to do now is completely rub all the frames down in the whole plot, dust them off so they're ready to uh, put a coat of primer on them. Frames have been rubbed down and dusted off. Now the next thing to do on these MDF frames is get a coat of acrylic primer undercoat. As you see I'm using an emulsion tub because I don't carry um, paint, paint kettles in the car. I just use a, an empty emulsion tub and then when I finish with it I don't need to put any wet kettles in the car do I? Now one thing to remember is I use a 3 inch brush. I will put a really good coat on these frames. And one of the secrets is try and fill as many gaps uh, down the off shift with, with, with the acrylic as you can to eliminate the amount of gunning up you've got to do. Right? So needless to say, start on the top. Three inch brush, put plenty on. As long as you level it out, you're not going to get any runs or drip or anything like that. And if you don't use a three inch brush, try and use one for a day. After you've used it for a day, you won't look back. You put the paint on quicker, and one of the secrets to painting anything is getting plenty of paint on. Don't scrape the paint on. See, too many painters with a too much brush scraping it off. You look at the frames when they're acting, didn't they? You don't look like putting the paint on. Mind you, it is a bonus that the heating is on full blast. They've been gunned up. I've still got a D nib there. Um, 
uh, I've just taped up the stairs, rubbed them down and uh, undercoated the stairs. Uh, my next port call is come down the string so I've freed all the stairs off, yeah? And then <clears throat> I'm going to follow up by undercoating the old plot. So what I'm going to do is get the seals on, uh, then undercoat the skirts and uh, denib the frames and uh, get a coat of satin on the frames. So let's crack on with the undercoating. On the undercoating stage now, um, I've done all the window sills, done the stairs, the stringing, um, first coated the frames. <clears throat> all I've got left now is the skirt, so uh, using a 3 inch brush, oil based undercoat, and as you know, work out the emulsion tub and all of it. Because I've done minimum amount of filling, only what's required. That's it. That's all my undercoating done now. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, just gun up round some of these sills, <coughs> uh, put a pad to the frames, rub them down a little bit, and uh, get a first coat of satin on their frames because I need to get that done so I can get it finished tomorrow. So just get the frames rubbed down. I think. I'm on the final stage, I'm going to start satin wood, satin wood in everything up. Um, I denibbed the frames and uh, I first coated all the frames in satin for so I've just got to flash over them. Basically when I say flash over I mean I've not got, I've not got to cut down the side of the architrips and stuff so I've just got to get another coat because normally with satin finish you do what, uh, one undercoat don't you and two satin to get that proper finish. Um, so yeah, first coat of them. What I'm going to start off by doing when it comes to like putting the final coat on, um, I'm going to start off get all the sills coated up, which I'm going to do now. Then I'm going to jump back on the frames, get another coat on them. Then come down with the stairs and then finish off doing the skirtings. And I do the skirtings last because you're going to pick up your bit of uh, grit and stuff, ain't you? So I'm going to start off by getting all the sills on. Yeah, let's crack on with that. What I've got here is some fine uh, P180, the grey stuff, I like this. Better than using a pad on the sills. And it, it, they're pretty smooth anyway. So I just want to give them just a slight lift over. Man, to like balance around the radar, because I've got to take the radar off. Quite a bit of a lick over like that. 
And when you do your shoes, always dust off this wind a bit here. You don't want it dropping back on your shoes here. Might have lean over the rack there. Got me sat in my motion kettle. So I'm just going to start off by doing the underneath lip. Just round the side and the underneath lip, we should say. Don't put too much on your brush because you don't want it dripping down your arm, do you? Just get a coat on that face. Put plenty on, but won't overdo it, obviously. If you do see any bits of grip, just touch it with your finger, take it off, and that's it. Seal done, like so. Put the rag back on, which is boiling bloody up. Job done. So, right, what I'm going to go around, get all the seals coated up, start off with a clean, clean satin, do you know what I mean? And, uh, Get a coat on the uh, second coat on the frames, stairs, and jump on the uh, the skirts uh, the, uh, on, on the last bit. So yeah, let me get on with that. Right, guys, all the sills are uh, coated up. Like I say, the frames have had the first coat. They don't need rubbing down again. So what I'm doing, I'm just going to go over the whole frame again with um, with the satin, but I have thinned it down slightly. Do you know what I mean? So. It just, just puts a, 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 a relatively decent coat on and then they'll, they'll look solid as uh, solid as they're ever going to look. So basically, three inch brush again. I'm not lathering it on because it's, it's had a good coat already. Just like basically just going, going over it again. And this will just make it look solid as a rock. Like I say, just use a three inch brush and you know, you, you cover a larger area. Not piling it on, just doing a relatively half decent coat on it. Careful you don't throw off your paint on the surrounding wall because that just means more touching up at the end of the end of it. You don't, you don't have to go right to the bottom of the frame. I'll just go about an inch from the bottom of the frame. You will need to go back after you've done half a dozen frames and just slightly go over it with a dry brush in case you've got any uh, runs, which you do tend to get around the, the hinge area. Just, you just catch that lip, don't you? And it, <clears throat> catch that lip and it uh, starts dripping a bit from them. That's basically it. And I have got the heating on in this plot. It's absolutely baking in here. I'm not joking. But I'm putting up with it being 
really hot because the paint was off quick, didn't it? And it, it does make a lot of difference just putting that second coat to satin on. You'll be surprised how much more solid the frame look. Because the agents, when they come and check your plots, they're, they're not that, do you know what I mean? They're side agents because they're, they're clever blokes at the end of the day, do you know what I mean? You have to know a bit about everything because on site, and that includes the painting. You are quite clued up when it comes to snagging your plots. So there you go, second coat of satin. I'll come back to that in five, ten minutes. Just whiz over it with a dry brush, like I'm doing now, and move. So I'm going to just crack on with all the frames. Right, just on the last legs of the uh, top coat now, just got the stairs to finish. Frames have all had three coats. Skirts have been done. Stairs are just about done, silvers are done. That's it guys. Just finishing it off now. What I'll do as soon as I've done this and just check for runs on the stairs. Um, the next job just got to silver the pipes off and uh, go around them. Just touch the walls up into the next block. Right guys, just on the final uh, bit now, when you've uh, finished doing your, your top coat on your woodwork, uh, just do your silver pipes and go around and touch up the walls, any dirty marks that you've made around the frames where you've caught the, the wall with a finished coat, so I'm just going to do that now. Right then ladies and gentlemen, that's it, a step by step guide of how you go about painting a new build plot from start to finish. Just one thing to remember whether you're doing gloss or satin finish is when you've completely finished your plot, do it like your hand rail, silver pipe, etc. Go around and touch up the plot, uh, especially around the frames where you've caught the wall with your gloss or, or satin, whatever. Just go around and double check everything, make sure everything's bang on. And uh, then no one can complain really, can they? So I hope you've enjoyed the content of this video. Um, don't forget to, and uh, until next time, from the Candleman, cash. Hello guys, welcome back to Life on the Brushes. And I'm here with, a, with an old flame. For, for, for this video, we'll call him Bambi. No, not really, this is it. <laughs> this is Johnny.